Well, hello YouTube. Today I'm going over a video uh, where I hope to explain the differences between air combat maneuvering and space combat maneuvering. Uh, if you're coming from uh, you know high level uh, flight sims into space combat games, uh, you are going to find yourself pulling tactics that will get you killed in the space combat game. Um, it happens to me more than I would care to admit, uh, coming from Falcon BMS. Uh, but this really applies to those of us who have been coming from games like Falcon BMS, the, the various DCS installments, uh, the IL-2 series of games, uh, to a certain extent War Thunder um, as well, because uh, some of the maneuvers we're going to discuss today is uh, applies there as well. Now, this is by no means a comprehensive... Um, episode over air combat and space combat maneuvering. I will be breaking this up into smaller to digest sections as fights happen in way of the kill. Um, things I see, things that people bring up in the comments section, bring up to me on TeamSpeak, forums, other places, and uh, I'll, I'll address those in future episodes in much more depth, detail, and explanation. So today I have my proof that I failed kindergarten art class, but uh, I have my two little cardboard shut out, uh, cutouts, ship number one, ship number two. This could be a Cobra and Elite Dangerous. I know I've added some little wings to give it some three-dimensional pep. And then I guess the smaller one, number two, is a Sidewinder, an Eagle, whatever. I might try to get a little bit more artsy in the future, but uh, I'm not that crafty and neither is my wife and the tops are the part with the little sharpie cockpit drawn in bottoms are where the sticks are taped to the uh, thing so here's my cardboard lollipop starships um, for this demonstration so let's get started you'll hear fighter pilots in air combat maneuvering often talk about getting into the kill slot and I think a lot of people the common misconception is that's right on their six o'clock this was true, uh, more or less, in World War I, where you had a very, very short range, you know, a couple hundred, you know, 100 to 300 meters um, was as far as you could shoot accurately with the machine gun of that era, um, you know, to be square in the sights. But actually, in most modern jet combat sims and stuff like that, the kill slot is actually up about 15 degrees high and at the 530 or 630 position. It doesn't matter if you're left or right. Um, and the reason being is bullets drop due to gravity and friction or drag. So traditionally since planes are usually longer this way than they are that way, like an F-16's wings are fairly short but its fuselage is a little bit longer, this gives you the biggest picture to shoot in the most surface area to shoot and hit the opposing target. So that's why this is called the ideal kill slot. In a space combat game, especially one where you have uh, all control of all six axes independently, the ideal kill slot is this. 90 degrees. Actually, ideal is shooting at their bottom. But the top works also. The nice thing about the bottom is if you start hitting them there, They've got to basically turn around 180 degrees in order to get eye eyeballs on you uh, and make visual contact. So in that few seconds, however long that takes, they're blind and you're hammering them. Now, there are some differentials in um, what happens based on the game and game mechanics. Like in Elite Dangerous, the shields are a mono face. So your, their shields go down no matter if you're hitting them in the back, the front, the sides, doesn't matter. Uh, in Star Citizen, it depends on the ship you're flying. The Aurora is like that, but the uh, 300 series has a front and aft shield. The Hornet has four shield faces, so it'll depend on what shield you're equipping, what ship you're flying, etc., etc. Um, because in Star Citizen, if you are flying, if your number one ship is a Hornet, and you're rolling like this, that may not, you know, or we start out like that and you're rolling around, well, maybe, you know, you go from this shield to that shield to that shield, and you're spreading out damage. Um, so you're not taking nearly as much damage in the roll as you would, say, um, Elite Dangerous or Flying an Aurora. So those are some things to keep in mind. So, back to air combat here. Traditionally, 
if I am the number one position, hear the call, guns, 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 or see the tracer fire going through, my immediate reaction is going to be to pull up, hit the brakes, try to bleed as much airspace or airspeed, roll around, and force an overshoot. Now, that's an ideal. You know, I roll around, come down on the overshoot, and now I'm in the offensive, he's in the defensive, and hopefully I've taken a shot. The worst case scenario is maybe he's a little bit further, well, I shouldn't say the worst case scenario, but another acceptable scenario, I pull up. He manages to not overshoot, but then we find ourselves essentially engaged in a rolling scissors and starting to scissors until one of us makes a mistake and the other guy gains the advantage. You're far better off to be in this situation than you are with the guy behind you shooting you. Um, but ideally, you know, the man maneuver is um, up, around, and down. That's what you want to do in an aerial combat game. Well, some of you have probably figured out what the problem of doing that in a space combat game is. Because the second you pull up, what have you just done? You've just given this guy an ideal kill position. And he's going to take it, if he's smart, he's taking advantage of it. And as you are trying to do the pull-up maneuver, he can engage his lateral thrusters and follow you. So, you know, we have six degrees, six axes here. Oh, and let's say I can boost away. Well, I just pitch up, you know, pitch up and behind. Um, he's still on your six. You never got an angle for attack. I think a video that I've already done that illustrates this point very uh, clearly is the Way of the Kill Fierce Mike video, uh, the fight Fierce Mike kill. I'm flying number two here. He's in number one, and... If we start out the engagement, it starts out something like this. Now he kind of sees me, starts trying to pull towards me. At this point, I boost to force an overshoot and then go like this, emerge, he takes damage, he tries to do it, we roll. Again, I, you know, pull, and then we kind of trade like this several more times but he's never able to get his nose on me and get a clear shot. And meanwhile, I'm hitting him all the time. Each one of those successive engagements, I'm putting rounds on target. So, you know, what can you do if you find yourself, you know, in that fierce mic position of, well, here I am, you know. I guess I should probably stop step a little bit back. See if that works any better. Mm. I'm going to have to adjust some cam camera angles for the next time I try this, but you know. So what were some things he could have done here? Well, you have flight assist. You turn flight assist off, you keep going in this direction, but you can move your axes. So kind of looks something about like this. If he had done that, you know, okay, I would, I'm following him, and then, uh-oh, he's got guns on me, he's got four guns, I've got three, he's got better shields and armor, I'm probably going to lose unless I've got to now do something to go from the offensive, I'm now on the defensive, so I've either got to boost past him somehow, you know, pull a different angle, roll out, something. Something's going to get to give or I'm going to get killed. Conversely, you can achieve the same effect with flight assist on by when he was trying to pull this maneuver, instead of trying to boost or go forward, hit reverse thrust and try to extend that out, just kind of a sweep out. If he had done that, the end result would have been the same. Here I am kind of stuck and going Kaboom. You know, I think I got a J.J. Abrams lens flare. Huh. I was doing my J.J. Abrams impression there. Uh, sorry about that. 
Again, first time doing this video, so I'm not sure. I'll figure out how to do some of the things better, maybe move some items that are on the wall. Um, so we don't get J.J. Abrams lens flare uh, effects. I swear I'm not making a Star Trek movie. Um, so those are just some very basic differences between air combat maneuvering and space combat maneuvering, and how if you try to pull off a classic air combat maneuvering uh, maneuver, you're going to get basically killed. You know, another option, he could have done the Hornet commercial, although you wouldn't want to pull up, but hit the brakes, let me fly on by, you know? Maverick and Goose did. Hit the brakes, fly on by, get then behind them, and all of a sudden, oh crap! Um, and we'll discuss, you know, the more ins and outs of how far separation do you need to be able to do that and some other factors that you've got to account for uh, when choosing what um, tactics to go through in future videos. This was a very, 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 very gl brief gloss over of the differences between ACM and SCM. Um, I want to thank you very much for watching the video. I think that's all I really have the uh, voice to do for today. Um, Give me feedback on what you think about the camera angles, ideas, suggestions uh, for combat maneuvers you'd like to see me explain. Um, and future videos, ideas, things of that nature. I'm always looking for ideas, questions, comments, problems, suggestions. Let me know in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. Please subscribe to the channel to get updates on future videos because I'll be doing this probably about once a week. Um, you know, it really depends on situations and scenarios. It may be every other week uh, in the future, but at least for right now, once a week uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, and also, I have my other videos. I'm doing about four videos a week right now, and I'm sure there's going to come a time where I'm going to have to uh, pare that down. But uh, for the rest of the summer, enjoy. Uh, we'll reevaluate come fall how many videos I'm doing per week. So. Thank you very much, and uh, see you around the verse.